First thing we're going to do is we are going to delete the default cube. Add an icosphere. Drag it down a bit. Control A to apply its location. Go into the materials tab, add a new material, make its surface emission. Leave it as it is for now. For the next bit you have to have sapling tree gen add-on enabled. If you don't have, just go into edit preferences and add-ons and search for, search for sapling tree gen and enable it. Now we press shift A to add a curve sapling tree gen. We open this little panel that right down there. You have a lot of settings you can change. All I'm going to change is I'm going to change the resolution down because we don't need that high resolution of a tree. Uh, in this thing here you can change a lot of settings and change the entire look of your tree. But we're just going to leave it and go to leaves. Select show leaves. Select the leaf shape as dupli faces. It already selected the leaf object as the icosphere. And if it doesn't, just select the sphere down here. The sphere is going to be our light, by the way. Add the num make the number of leaves to 10, just like that. And we can close this panel. Select the icosphere and scale it down a bit till the lights of the tree are about that size. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to go into shading with our icosphere sphere, 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 sphere still selected. Now we're going to add a few material nodes to the sphere. First one is going to be an object info node and we put it right there next one is going to be a noise texture node next one is going to be a brightness and contrast node next one is going to be a color ramp connect random to vector color to color color to factor color to color uh, color to color color doesn't want to go to color color to color that's it all right now we're going to make the scale of our random texture to 10. And we can make the detail 16. We're going to move the contrast to 29. We're going to go to the color ramp, select that slider, and move it to about 50%, and make it constant. Make the color red. Select that one, make its color green. No, better green. Green. We can increase the strength of our mission to, let's say, 30. Go to the render settings tab and enable blue. That makes it look a lot better. We decrease the strength here uh, no, about 24 and make this color a bit more yellowish like. Not like that, that looks fine. Alright, now you will notice the following. When we move the brightness, change it. It changes the light color in quite a Christmassy way. That is very nice. So that is the value we are going to animate. So I'm going to drag a new window in here and make it a timeline, go to frame 1, we are going to animate up into frame 120, so set, set that as the end. At the first frame, we are going to set the brightness to minus 5. That way, all the lights are green. Hit I with mouse over brightness to animate and place a keyframe. Go to frame 120 and press I again without changing value. Go to frame 60, make the value 6 and press I to place a keyframe. Now, we can see the lights are animated. When we play the animation, the lights change color. Wow, that's amazing. Alright, if these values does not give you all green and all red at the first try, just play around with them until that happens. You might also need to play with this. I don't know how Blender handles random generation of variables and stuff, but it seems to be quite the same every time I do this. Because I've done this a couple of times, because I did a couple of takes for this tutorial, because I suck at speaking. A little bit. Alright. So, the next thing we want to do is we are going to add a material to the tree trunk tree, because that looks kind of bad, just having it all bright and shiny. So select it, add a new material, and leave it white, because Christmas is snow time, apparently. We're going to add a noise texture node. We're also going to add a brightness and contrast node. We're also going to add a mix, mix RGB node. Now these three nodes is a very nice way to make anything dirty, also. So we're going to connect color to color, and color to factor. Make the bottom color black. Add the color to base color, or connect them, not add, that's incorrect. Right, and now we are going to increase the scale here and increase the contrast. And then we get that effect, which makes the tree look not that entirely one colorish. We can play around with these values until it looks looks all right, just as we want it. All right, ah, that looks good. All right, next thing we want to do is we add, want to add a base, add a mesh plane, scale it up, edit mode, select that edge and that edge extrudes it just like that and when we render this you will notice and we want to delete that light when we render this you will notice that in Eevee the green emission material here does not 
project onto the surrounding environment. So we want to add a point light. Move it up on the z-axis, still right above the tree. Make its color green. Make its power 200. Now we got that. We want to select the light here at the bottom, the original one, and go into its material tab and make its shadow mode to none, because lights don't really cast shadows, that is just plain weird. Select your light, and we obviously want to animate that. So at frame 1, we want to have its power to be 200 watts. So we hover over there and press I to add a keyframe. We can duplicate that keyframe to frame 1, 120. At frame 60, the tree is all red. So we want to make its power 0, and place a keyframe. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to duplicate the light, hit enter, and we want to make it red. At frame 1, we want the red to be 0, press I to add a keyframe. At frame 60, we want the red to be 200. Press I to add a keyframe. And duplicate that first one, and put it over the one at the end. Now, we have this effect. Because we have those two lights up there. One green, one red. Just following the color of the general color of the Christmas light bushy thing. And what would also be, be nice if we would add a little base thing here, shall we? So we are going to add a grid. And we're going to make its subdivisions 20 by 20. Hit enter. And we're going to move it up a little bit. We're going to press tab to go into edit mode. To wireframe, select the centermost face right there in the middle. And enable proportional editing. Grab, move it upwards in the Z axis just like that. Go out of edit mode. Add a cylinder. Scale it down in the Z axis. Move it up a little bit. Scale it just so these edges are not touching there. And select the plane. Add a modifier, boolean, select the object as the cylinder, and change the operation to intersect. Click apply. Select the cylinder, go into edit mode, select the top face, delete its face, go out of edit mode, add a modifier, solidify, and scale it outwards, just like that. Go into object mode, shade smooth, go into object info, I think, object data, go into normals, and press auto smooth. That makes it look kind of nice. You can move that down a little bit, you can move this one up a little bit. And select the cylinder and add a new material and make it dark. Let me show you like that. Right, that's nice and dark. Now this base thing here is obviously snow, so we're going to go into shading and add a new material. And we're going to copy a little bit here. So we're going to go to the tree trunk, select it, select these three nodes, Control c to copy them, select the snow thing, Control v to paste them. And now we're going to add a bump node. Just put it there, connect the color to the height, move this down, and connect the normal to the normal. And that will give us that. Swilly, nice, bumpy snowiness. And then we just scale the strength down a little bit to about there. And we can also decrease the roughness. Now I know real snow is sparkly and all that, but we're just going to leave it as it is right now. Now we can go into layout, and for edit effect, we can add a sugar cane. First thing, I want to change the backdrop's color, add a new material, and make it darker. Just like that. Yeah, that's nice. And also enable auto smooth or shade smooth so that it looks like that. Now we're going to make a sugar cone. We're going to add a circle, rotate Y90. And we're going to move it down so it's there at the bottom. And we're going to go into side of the graphic view by pressing 3 on the numeric pad. Go into edit mode, vertex select, B for box select, select all the bottom vertices, uh, deselect all the vertices, B for box select, select all the bottom vertices, X to the lead the vertices, select that one, E to extrude Z axis and pull it down like that. Now we have a cane shape. We are going to go into the, uh, go out of edit mode, go into object with the cane selected, go into convert to curve. Now we are going to add a cylinder, move it down, scale it down to about that. This will be our sugar cane. Now my graphics freaks out, so I'm just going to go into solid view, go into edit mode on this thing, and it being having 32 faces all around, we're going to select four. Skip 4, select 4 again, skip 4, select 4, skip 4, select 4, and now they are evenly selected. Going to render it, and we add a new material, and leave it white. We add a new material, and make it red. With these faces selected, press assign. Now, they are all red. Select the topmost face right there, go into side auto graphic view, and extrude it upwards until it's about the same thickness here as below. Hit Shift R a lot of times to duplicate or re-perform the action until you have quite a long cane. Go out of edit mode, move it down a little bit, just like that. 
Go back to edit mode with the topmost face selected and proportional editing enabled. Press R to rotate, scale up the proportional editing radius with the mouse wheel and rotate it around the Z axis and just rotate it, creating a swirly effect of the cane and the same for the bottom. Rotate it around the Z axis with proportional editing and we get that. Alright, I'm going to solve you again. Now we're going to, with this thing selected, select the curve, Control P to parent, curve deform. Boom, there we have it. And grab it, and you can move it in the, select the cylinder, and move it in Z axis to do that, if you want to do that for any reason. But we're just going to leave it like that. Now we're going to the, into the modifiers tab and click apply, that modifier. And we're going to click Alt P and say clear parent and keep transformation. That way we can delete the curve thing that sticks out the bottom right there. And now we can go and position our cane as we wish. We can also just set its origin uh, to geometry so that when we scale it, it doesn't go all weird in weird places and move around the scene that is really weird. We're just going to move like that. The cane is maybe not thick enough. You can fix that by making the starting cylinder a bit thicker. We can enable uh, Shade Smooth right there to make that look a bit better. And we can duplicate this and move it around and rotate, rotate it around Z-axis. And just put another cane in there, just like that. And I can go into the camera, search, walk, navigation, and just like move out, scale up that thing so it fills the entire scene render and then we have that and remember if you like this video all i want for christmas is you subscribing to my channel <laughs> have a merry christmas and bye bye we